always have to watch out for the margins between different types of ice. So we were just skating on this black ice and there's this margin here, this white ice margin. And this also looks like black ice here, but that's not gonna hold my weight. Somewhere right around an inch, I would fall right through if I skated over that. These kind of barriers demarcate the places that you need to watch out for. Back with my last ice skating video, I promised an ice safety video. And today seems like the day. We're out here on Thompson Lake. It is absolutely gorgeous. It's right after the deep freeze that we just had. And this plate of black ice has really solidified. Uh, we're looking at at least four inches of black ice. And then over here, we've got older gray ice. So it should be an awesome skate day, but I thought I'd start by just kind of going through what I've got in my pack and how I kind of approach safety on the ice. And I think it's worth keeping in mind there are people who know a lot more about ice safety than I do. And there's also people who really don't think about ice safety and have been okay out on the ice. But I really recommend doing your research, trying to figure it out and get to a level where you feel you can be safe. Let's start with the most important tool, I think, uh, for testing the ice, which is an ice testing pole. There's people with homemade ones. Uh, I just saw some people out here on the lake who have a wooden shaft with some sort of hardened metal nail or point in the front. But I like this one. Um, I know that every time I stab it, that's an inch of depth roughly. So if I can get three or four hard hits with this, the ice is probably gonna support my weight. So that adds a lot of security, especially on my first lap around the lake, testing the ice, making sure it's good, safe to skate. Okay, so the next thing is everything I've got in my pack. But the pack itself is kind of important. So this one is actually my Hyperlite ski touring pack. You've probably seen it in some of our other content, but I think it works really well as a pack for doing ice skating as well. It's made of a waterproof fabric. And while all of the seams aren't taped, it does offer a good level of waterproofing. So if I were to fall through, the air in the pack adds buoyancy, and it'll also keep all the things that I have inside dry, at least for the short period of time, hopefully, that I'd be in the water. So one of the reasons I really love this pack, my backcountry ski touring pack, as opposed to some of the other packs that I have, is that it has this back pocket, which when I'm ski touring is filled with my avalanche safety gear, but out on the ice, it's got my ice safety gear. So the first thing that I recommend anyone who goes out on the ice having are ice picks. Um, I had these in here just so I could pull them out and show you. But when I'm skating around, I'll have them around my neck and I'll have my hood up so that they're kind of trapped against my skin here. And these you use, if you were to fall through, they have a hardened ice pick that retracts and you can stab your way out of an ice hole. So it's really important to keep these on you, on your body at all times, somewhere where you can easily grab them. So next, I always keep a throw rope. So this one was actually originally a paddling throw rope, but it's really handy. I can hold on to this end, throw this carabiner out to somebody if they've fallen through and help pull them out. So that's a really key tool for helping rescue other people out on the ice. And like I said, having that handy somewhere in your pack where you can easily find that is really important. Next, I've got this, a very small inflatable life vest. Sometimes like days where I've been out on fairly thin ice on Sebago Lake, I actually wear this life vest. It goes around my waist as a belt and it has a quick and easy pull tab to inflate it. Today, I feel much more comfortable on the ice. I'm keeping it in my pack. I know where it is. It's easy to access for me if I needed it. And I also have it available to throw to someone else if they need it. 
but I just tend to use common sense. I don't use all of my gear every time, but get the right gear for the conditions you're out in. So then in the main compartment of my pack, I've got a couple things. Today, I've got my drone, which is not safety related, but just happens to be in there. But the really key thing is a spare change of clothing. I keep mine in this bag, adds another level of waterproofing. So even if some water got into my pack, hopefully my clothes will stay dry in here. I've got a full uh, wool base layer kit, top and bottom. I've got windproof pants and a puffy jacket so that I can completely change spare gloves. So I can completely change. I don't bring this every time I go skating, uh, but any time where I'm planning to go more than like a mile from the car, this is key. Or if the ice is sketchier. You know, you probably don't need a lot of the safety gear if you're only planning on going on backyard pond ice. But if you're planning to do a tour, a couple mile tour out on a big lake, you really want to make sure that you have everything you need because you could freeze before you get back to your car. So uh, that is basically the only thing that I keep inside my packs. This, the size of this pack is overkill, but it allows me to be very secure about what I have and, and keeping it safe and dry. So one of the most important things, probably even more important than the gear, is knowing what to look for when you're out on the ice. Now, the best way is to go out on ice with someone who knows a lot more about ice. There's people who spend 30 to 50 days of winter probably out on ice, and they have a real sense for it. But I would say the best trick I've learned is look for places where there's seams, places where the ice kind of changes, because that's most likely where there will be an issue. So as you can see right here, I am on an older piece of gray ice. So this probably had some snow form on top. The, the snow then melted, but it, it's caused this gray ice. And just to my left is black ice. So the black ice is very fresh. It's new. We just had a very cold spell. So luckily, and I've already tested it today, this is plenty thick. It's four, four inch thick ice, but it's these kind of seams that you really want to look out for when you're out skating. And my first time around a body of water, I always bring this ice testing pole. And whenever I come to a place where the ice starts to look a little different, it's always worth testing because you never know what, what might be there. All right, let's go explore a little more. This is unbelievable. Thompson Lake, or most of it up here at least, is just this four inch black ice plate. There's almost no pressure ridges, which are the seams where the wind has pushed ice up or down against each other. There's just very consistent uh, and confidence inspiring black ice today. But of course, by the time this video comes out, things may have changed. So always do your research and always do your own testing when you head out on the ice. Don't always trust someone else's ice report. It can help give you some insight, but things change really quickly out here. Well, the sun's getting low. We had a few drone issues, um, but we were able to get it up. Hopefully the shots will be good. Otherwise, I'll be coming back tomorrow morning and getting a couple more. pressure ridge here. Remember yesterday when I said there were no pressure ridges out here? Just hadn't found them yet. So these are the kind of features that you really need to be careful of and test as you cross them. But we'll just cruise up slowly. Yeah. So this is actually a great example of a pressure ridge. 
we've got these two plates of ice that have pushed up against each other and that's what's causing the uplift of this. But the good news is with the cold, it's actually pretty solid. However, we can also just go right around over there. So I'll probably do that and not take any risks, but it's always good to test these kind of spots. We're skating along them a safe distance away. Ah, uh, you can hear some flexing. And there's some water right underneath there, yep. So we're definitely making the right call, just going around. So, as you can see right here, some open water. These are the kind of features that even after a negative 20 degree spell will still pop up and you just gotta be conscious of. They're totally avoidable. And as you can see, I'm 10, 15 feet away and safe. I'm on solid ice, but you just have to be paying attention. You can't be skating full speed ahead or you might run into something like this. talking about how you always have to watch out for the margins between different types of ice. So we were just skating on this black ice and there's this margin here, this white ice margin. And this also looks like black ice here, but that's not gonna hold my weight. Somewhere right around an inch, I would fall right through if I skated over that. And meanwhile, on this side, Doesn't look that different, but we've got over four inches over here. So these kind of barriers demarcate the places that you need to watch out for. And like with the last one, we'll just stay right around it. It's not gonna block our progress today, but please be conscious of different looking ice and, and test it every time. So I'm back out for day two at Thompson Lake, but I realized I forgot to say one of the most important safety things to do when you're out skating, and that's to always go out with a buddy. Just having another person out with you adds a whole level of safety. So yesterday I was out here with Christine. Today I'm out here with my buddy Ryan, the same Ryan that we did the tumble down video with, but yeah, if you have the opportunity, always go with someone. It just increases the potential of safety, a rescue, a phone call, anything. My plan today was to come out here, really show a variety of ice features that might pose issues for first time or beginner skaters coming out on wild ice. Hopefully, this video will at least show you a couple of the things to look out for and some of the gear that you should have in your pack and show you the thinking that I kind of go through. But in essence, I think it all comes down to common sense. You just, you gotta test. The pole is your friend and you just have to make sure that you're making smart decisions at every turn because the consequences out on ice can really be terrible and it's, it's worth making sure that you're safe. So, thanks so much. I hope you enjoyed this video and please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, as always. Cheers.